Hello, welcome to today's immigration tidbit. Well, he can certainly make a motion to vacate the federal charge. Okay, that, that's not the issue. The issue is what is the probability and whether it's realistic in order to do so. So this particular question is some guy got a, uh, a drug offense charge, uh, possession for sale, and he received something like 37 months in jail. And it was a federal crime. Of course, it could certainly be state, but this was federal. Uh, and so first things you have to realize is the federal courts, it is much more difficult to vacate a crime than in state courts. That That's just the reality, okay? Um, they're less likely to try to backtrack and to... Uh, you know, vacate their orders than a state court. And given that, I usually try to look for other avenues before trying to see if I can vacate a federal charge. That doesn't mean I haven't tried. That doesn't mean that it can't be done. Um, but we do have statistics and we do have probabilities. And therefore, uh, we do need to look at other grounds just in case. So, strangely enough, one of the first grounds I look at is derivative citizenship. Every now and then, I'll get a guy who will come in, and I'll learn their story, and I'll say, where were your parents born? Where were your grandparents born? Were any of them U.S. citizens? And invariably, every now and then, there's a yes question. Sometimes, uh, in fact, uh, one it so happened his grandmother was born in the U.S. and then moved out. And so I did the analysis uh, two, for two generations. You know, the grandma to his mother, um, you know, all the physical presence and everything that would be needed. And then from his mother to him. And then I saw there was a realistic chance of derivative citizenship and made the motions. And sure enough, he ultimately acquired U.S. citizenship and therefore his federal charges didn't make any difference. Okay, I mean, he no longer could be deported because he was a U.S. citizen. So those are not often, but certainly it's somewhere I look. Uh, next, I look and see to make sure that it actually is a crime that makes someone an aggravated felon. If it's possible to argue uh, that the particular crime doesn't make them an aggravated felon, then that would be a line of attack to try to, to change uh, or make a motion to reopen um, in order to try to argue that, in fact, he should not have been deported for life uh, being an aggravated felon. Uh, next, I look to see if there's a possibility of a presidential pardon, okay, because it's a federal crime. We need to have a presidential pardon, and that depends on the crime, okay. Generally, drug crimes, even with a presidential pardon, will not suffice. Uh, so then we are left with trying to vacate uh, the the crime, which again can be made. You know, he might not have been given his advisals. He might not uh, have any idea what has happened type thing. Um, so there there's always that possibility. But I then find out what country they're from to see if there's a treaty with the U.S., for example, uh, for an E-2 visa uh, that's to start their own business with a non-immigrant waiver, okay? Because you can waive on, as a non-immigrant items which you are barred for life as an immigrant, believe it or not. Um, and sometimes people have their businesses or they have ideas for businesses and the E-2 is the way to go with the non-immigrant waiver. Obviously, I'm not saying it's easy, piece of cake, slam dunk, no problem, but it's viable, okay? It certainly is a way to go. So these are a few different things that you can think of uh, as alternatives or in addition to trying to vacate the charge, okay? Okay.